Well, this was supposed to be a different video. Today I was gonna do a review of anthropology, but the package got lost in the mail. And I was trying to think what I should do today instead. And I realized that the last time I did a Q and A was in 2018. So I figured, what the heck? No time like the present. There's probably a lot of people watching this who don't really know too much about me or my life and my beliefs and all that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll make this uh, an annual thing or a once every year and a half thing. I pulled these questions from from my Instagram. So if you wanna be involved in future videos like this, be sure to follow me, it's at Schultze. And most of the questions I pulled are about body positivity, confidence. There's some stuff in there about like my personal life with Steven trying to get pregnant. We'll get into it all. But before I do, I just wanted to let you guys know that I actually launched a Facebook group this week for like our community around my channel. It's called Confident and Kind if you wanna join it. I thought it would be a good way for us all to get to know each other better and form friendships. We can support and encourage each other and have some like virtual human contact. Especially right now, I know things can seem really isolating. So I thought maybe it would be a cool place for us all to chat and hang out. I kind of wanted to do like a Patreon thing where I could have a community for you guys, but I didn't want to make you guys pay for it. So Facebook group, it's free. You can search Confident and Kind on Facebook or just click the link in the description to join. I'd love to have you there. Now into the questions. How do you get healthier without getting obsessed with the number on the scale. Kylie, I feel you on this one. It's definitely something I'm still working on, but I will try to give my best advice on what's helped me. So first of all, I think it's setting health goals that aren't necessarily having to do with losing weight. So for me, once I started setting goals about building like stamina and strength, doing more reps, being able to run for longer, those things really helped me to feel like there was a reason that I was going to the gym and there was a reason that I needed to work out, but it wasn't back into the cycle that I had in college where it was just all about getting on the scale and doing whatever I could to be smaller. That approach has never worked for me and it just continued to spiral until I kind of stepped in and stopped that cycle to make myself realize that health isn't about a dress size or a number on a scale, but it's about using your body, fueling your body, strengthening your body so that you can do all of the things that you wanna do. How did you and Steven meet slash start dating? And did you always want to get married young? I'll answer both of these together because they're kind of related. So Steven and I met when I was in my senior year of high school. We met at Disneyland on dates with different people. <laughs> Those two relationships didn't work out and he slid into my DMs and the rest is history. <laughs> I usually like to leave it at just, we met at Disneyland cause that sounds a lot more romantic than it was. But we met in April of I think 2013 and then we started dating in December of 2013. Same year, but like the end of the year. And then we were both actually getting ready to go away to college. So we were both kind of in the mindset of like, we're just gonna keep this casual. We're not even gonna call each other boyfriend and girlfriend. We don't have to put a label on it. Like we're just dating casually. And then we fell in love with each other and decided to make it a priority to continue dating through college. And we moved in together at the end of our first year of college. And once we moved in together, I was like, okay, this works. I like you more living together when everyone says that living together is so hard. So I knew that he was someone that I would be so happy and thrilled to spend the rest of my life with. And I have never regretted that decision for a single minute of my life. It is the best decision I ever made. And a lot of people ask me, why did I get married so young? I got engaged at 20 and married at 21. I'm now 24. And here's the thing. I did not always wanna get married young. In fact, I didn't wanna get married at all. When I was in high school, I viewed marriage as this thing that was going to entrap me and keep me from my goals in life and my aspirations and my career. And it was gonna be something that held me back. And for a long time, actually, I was in the mindset of I am never getting married. And then as me and Steven's relationship progressed, I realized that marriage doesn't have to be this thing that holds you down. It's not a ball and chain unless you make it that. It's an amazing, empowering thing where you get to go through life with another person and you get to create a family unit with this person. And at the end of the day, like my life is so much better with him than without him. And I don't wanna lose that for a single day of my life. And when we got engaged, I had already started YouTube. And I remember seeing a lot of comments that were like, oh, is he in the military? Is it a religious thing? Is it because you guys wanna move in together? Nope, we just really love each other. <laughs> 
Do you think working with a dietitian has helped and would you recommend seeing one? So I got diagnosed with PCOS in, was it over summer of last year, I think? And at first I didn't really know how to deal with it or what to do. So I started looking into some ways that I could help manage my PCOS, especially with trying to conceive. It can be harder for women with PCOS to conceive a child because they tend to not have as many cycles or at least I do. But there are ways that you can try and help your body regulate its cycle. And one of those ways is changing your diet. So I found a body positive dietitian in my area who specializes in PCOS, infertility, trying to conceive. It was a really great match. As soon as I met her and talked with her, I knew that this was something that could really help me manage PCOS if I committed to it. And it definitely has. If it's something that's within your means, I would highly recommend looking into a dietitian if you just don't fully feel like you understand how food and your body work, kind of. I guess, especially as someone who is vegetarian and has PCOS, there are a lot of things that I have to navigate with my diet and working with a dietitian, especially a body positive dietitian, really helped me to understand my body, learn how foods affect my body with PCOS and really helped to manage my symptoms and regulate my cycle, just reducing the amount of like naked carbs I was eating and upping the protein. I saw big changes in my symptoms once I got all of that under control. Control. Danny says, how old are your dogs? So I have two little rescue dogs, Bella and Bruiser. Here's a picture. They are the freaking light of my life. I love them so much. We don't actually know exactly how old they are because they're rescues. They estimate based on their dental records, but low key, <laughs> I kind of think the estimates might not be as accurate as they say they are. And they pick a desirable age to make the dog more adoptable because we adopted Bruiser when I was, 16? 16. So that would be eight years ago. And they said she was a year and a half when I got her, which would make her nine and a half. And I think she is way older than nine and a half. She started getting gray hair a long time ago. She is a little old lady, but we know she's at least nine and a half. And then Bella, I got a year after I got Bruiser. No, yes, two years after I got Bruiser. <laughs> and they also said she was a year and a half, but I mean, I look at pictures of her when I first got her and she looked like a puppy. She acted like a puppy. She had a lot of maturing that she had to do. So I kind of think Bella was younger than they said she was when we got her. But according to their estimates, Bruiser would be nine and a half and Bella would be seven and a half. What do you think of people photoshopping their photos to look thinner. So I, I think it's no secret that I am not a fan of this. I used to facetune the crap out of my photos and it came from a place of really deep insecurity and, and being really unhappy with the way that I looked. And I felt like if the way I was trying to change my body in person, like actually change my body wasn't working, which was crash dieting and being inconsistent with exercise. So no wonder it didn't work. But I thought that if I couldn't actually change my body in person, here, I'll make it look the way I want it to look in this image that I'm presenting online. So I understand the headspace that a lot of people are in when they do Photoshop and Facetune their photos. Like I get it, I've been there. And so to just the average everyday girl who's sitting at home Facetuning her photos for, you know, her friends and family who follow her. I feel more like sadness than anything that she feels like she needs to do that. And I wouldn't recommend calling people out on Facetune because that doesn't actually help anything. But I have a different view on influencers who Facetune and I'll just briefly touch on that. First, I think as soon as you have a platform, you do have some level of responsibility. If young girls are following you and looking at you and saying, I wanna look like that, I wanna be like that, and you're manipulating your images to fit this unrealistic standard of beauty that even you don't fit, that's not a very responsible way to influence people and to use your platform. But I do have slightly more understanding for people who do that and are very open about their face tuning. Like if you're gonna do it, at least own up to it and be honest about it because then the people know that they're looking at an image that's doctored and not real. Opinions on the LGBTQ plus community. So I have actually answered this question many, many times and I will continue to answer it because it is very important to me. I am a Christian. I am a non-denominational Christian and I full heartedly, 100% unabashedly support the LGBTQ plus community. And that's where I stand on that. And honestly, the way that 
The way that some people espouse Christianity makes me embarrassed to be a Christian, which is why I often refer to myself as a follower of Jesus versus a Christian, because my beliefs come from a core of wanting to follow Jesus and do as he did and love people the way that he did. So yes, I am a Christian and I have a lot of beliefs that some people do not associate with traditional Christianity, but to me, in my belief and the way that I follow God and live my life, I believe that that is the right thing to do. And that's where I'm going to leave that. I don't want to start a big debate or discussion. I respect everyone's opinions and beliefs, but that's where I stand. Is there a threshold, like a certain weight where body positivity no longer applies? Okay, so I'm just gonna break this down. This might be kind of a long rant because I feel like this is something that so many people just get wrong about body positivity. So first, you cannot tell someone's health by looking at them. You don't know what's going on inside someone's body just by looking at their aesthetics. There are thin people who can be drastically unhealthy and out of shape cardiovascularly. And there are fat people who can be perfectly healthy and fit and who could run circles around you. But someone's weight and health is not your business anyways. Like just stay in your lane, mind your own damn business, worry about yourself, I'll worry about me, They'll worry about them. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't want this to be heated, but this kind of stuff just gets me fired up. You can't tell by looking at someone what is going on inside their body. You don't know what conversations they're having with their doctors and you don't know what their lifestyle is. And I'll go ahead and say, every time that I have been body shamed in person by someone in my real life, it has been about aesthetics and it has never been about health. It's been, you'd look so much more beautiful on your wedding day if you lost weight, or think about how happy you'd be if you could wear a bikini this summer. It's not about health. It's about people thinking that you have to be thin in order to be happy and worthy of living a full life. But I did look beautiful on my wedding day, and I do feel happy when I wear a bikini in the summer, and I don't have to change the physicality of my body to do those things. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think 95% of people who pretend to care about fat women health are actually just concerned about aesthetics and someone challenging their ideals of beauty and happiness. How dare you be fat and happy? You must be miserable unless you fit my ideal of beauty. Especially as women, I think so much of the messaging that is crammed down our throats from such a young age is look thinner, be smaller, lose weight, your value is in your appearance. And I grew up like that. And my mission with being online and having this channel is to try and make, even if it's just one less, one less girl grow up feeling that way and feeling so deeply unhappy and miserable with their appearance. Body positivity is saying, actually, no, I don't value myself like that. My life's purpose is not just to constantly try to be thinner and thinner and lose weight and continue that cycle of just hating myself for the way I look. And for people who still say that body positivity is bad because it encourages an unhealthy lifestyle, let's talk about that real quick. It has been proven that body shaming people does not actually work in motivating someone to lose weight or work out or get healthier. But do you know what does work? When people love themselves and value themselves and want to be fitter or healthier or stronger because they have that love for themselves. You cannot make someone want to be healthier. You cannot make someone want to work out. It doesn't work. Body shaming does not make people want to lose weight. It just makes them hate themselves. So congrats, if you're body shaming people, you're not actually motivating them. You're just making them also hate themselves now. People say, oh, but I I just want them to be healthy, but you don't. Because you know what happens when brands like Nike introduce plus size fitness lines or use plus size models in fitness advertising or bigger people talk about going to the gym or eating healthy, they get shamed, not encouraged. Body positivity is not about giving up on yourself. That is a complete straw man. No one actually thinks that. Body positivity is about valuing yourself and loving yourself as you are. Not waiting to do things until you're a certain size, not making your entire life's purpose just to lose weight, saying no to crash diets and eight week transformation workout programs, and valuing happiness and health over aesthetics. It's saying I love myself and my body the way it is. I do not need to strive for aesthetic changes to be happy. My body is my home and I will treat it 
with kindness. But no, there is no health limit or weight limit on body positivity. Because what someone weighs or what they choose to eat or how they choose to move their body is none of my damn business and none of anyone's business. And if someone is unhealthy, are they all of a sudden not worthy of respect and dignity? There is no weight limit on respect. All people, regardless of what they look like or what they weigh or what size they are, are worthy of respect. And when people love themselves, they tend to take care of themselves better physically and mentally. One more thing I wanna add, losing weight doesn't fix insecurities. That's a mental block that you have to work through. I tend to not read hate comments, but I did see one a couple days ago that was like, well, if you're so insecure about X, why don't you just lose weight? So let me just say, when I was at my thinnest, I was also my most miserable. I was more insecure than ever. I would say no to beach dates and pool days because I could not stomach the thought of myself in a swimsuit. I would go through cycles of binging and then crash dieting to punish myself for what I had ate or what I hadn't done, but I looked healthy. I was not healthy mentally or physically. And that's because I thought that all those insecurities would be fixed by just losing weight as quick as possible. I didn't do any mental work. I didn't focus on health instead of numbers. And I am bigger now than I was then, but I am so much more healthy and so much more happy. So that's my rant. I'm sure I left out a ton of stuff that I would have liked to say about body positivity and weight and health, but I will continue to be thick and happy over here, eating foods that make me feel good and fuel my body, using exercise to celebrate my body and what it can do and connect with it, and minding my own damn business, as we all should. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That was like half the video. Um, oh, not a question, but I am living for the daily vlogs. Thank you, Erin. I've been having so much fun vlogging every day. If you guys wanna check out my vlog channel, I will put a card for it right up there. <laughs> I really like having a second channel because it's kind of a place for me to feel like everything doesn't have to be perfect. I think a lot of the times on the main channel, I have this idea that like every video idea has to be super polished and produced. And even filming a Q and A like this today, I was like so worked up about it all day. I was like, this is not good enough. This is not main channel quality. And on the vlog channel, I just, I feel free. <laughs> Okay, I got two questions about Stardew Valley, so I'll answer them together. Name of your Stardew character and farm, and who are you trying to marry in Stardew Valley? So Stardew Valley is a video game that is like my favorite thing right now. It's just like my favorite way to kick back and unwind at the end of the day. I play it on my Nintendo Switch. I don't play it as much now as I would like to because I've been very busy creating videos right now and getting settled in the new house and stuff, but my Stardew Valley character is named Cece because that's my nickname. That was my nickname growing up. My farm is called Cece Topia and I married the artist Leah because she is a freaking queen. Best wife, 10 out of 10. If you haven't gotten married on Stardew Valley, you gotta do that. I have two kids already. I am progressed. I have three barns full of animals. My crops are thriving. I've got my greenhouse. I unlocked the community center. I've done some runs in Skull Cavern. I am, my Stardew Valley life is all together. My, my real life may not be, but Stardew Valley, thriving. Are you and Steven planning on trying for a baby again soon? Love you so much, Sierra. Thank you, I love you too, Mac Madden. I'm assuming your name is probably McKenna or Mackenzie or something like that, but hi. So Steven and I, we both really wanna be parents and we know that's something that we are gonna work towards no matter what way we go about doing it in the end. <laughs> doing it. We're talking about trying to conceive. I'm sorry. I'm 24. I need to grow up. Just kidding. Doing it jokes are always funny. Anyways, I just got my first period back since the miscarriage. So my doctor said once that happens, the ball's kind of in our court for what we want to do. I think the plan is to start trying again now that we're in the clear, but you know, things are definitely complicated by the situation in the world right now with the pandemic. I've done a lot of research into it and talked to my OBGYN and it seems like the consensus is just kind of, it's up to each individual couple, you know, it might be something that adds stress and anxiety, but if that's something that you think you can handle, you can still try to conceive. So the plan is to continue trying, but who knows how long it'll take and we're gonna kind of take it day by day. Depending on how the situation in the world progresses, we will continue to monitor that and make the decision that's best for us. Will you raise your children vegetarian or let them eat meat with Steven? Love you, love you too. So if you guys didn't know, I am a vegetarian and my husband Steven is not. I think that's a very personal choice. If someone chooses to be vegan or vegetarian, that's totally up to them. And if someone chooses to eat meat, that is equally up to them. If you couldn't tell, a big theme in my beliefs is mind your damn business. 
<laughs> that should just be my catchphrase at this point. Steven eats meat, I do not. So usually in our house, most of the joint meals that we cook are vegetarian because he doesn't mind eating vegetarian food. And then sometimes he will cook meat on the side to mix in or he just has like, you know, turkey and ham and stuff in the fridge so he can make sandwiches. And I think the biggest thing for me in, you know, thinking about how I want to raise future kids is understanding where food comes from. So when I was growing up, I didn't know that bacon came from pigs until I was like eight years old or seven years old or something. And I remember finding that out or putting two and two together and being really upset because I loved animals so much. But I think if a kid is old enough to understand where their food is coming from and you know, what has to happen to that animal in order for them to eat that meal. And that doesn't just go for kids. I think that goes for anyone. I think it's really important to understand where your food is coming from and make that choice informed, make that informed choice, I guess is what I was trying to say. But I have a lot of respect for people who, you know, have done their research and choose not to eat meat or have done their research and choose to eat meat. I think the biggest thing for me is just understanding where your food comes from, being informed on that, and then making that choice for yourself. So for Steven and I, we plan to initially raise our kids vegetarian, explain to them, you know, where food comes from, why dad chooses to eat meat and mom doesn't, and let them make that choice for themselves when they're old enough. Did you ever deal with body issues playing high school sports? I'm in high school and I run cross country and track and sometimes I feel awkward because I'm not necessarily stick thin like the typical runner. Obviously no pressure to talk about anything you're not comfortable with. That is so sweet. Thank you for saying that. I really do appreciate it. Um, But that's totally something I'm comfortable talking about. So I played competitive soccer and basketball growing up. I come from a very sports family. I am the token artsy theater one in the family of sports people, but I grew up playing sports competitive and I will say, I actually think being someone who was thicker played to my advantage in the sports that I played. In soccer and basketball, I was definitely a very physical player. <laughs> and being that I always had very, you know, thick muscular thighs and I was just built differently than a lot of the other girls on my team, I was able to muscle someone off the ball or box someone out. So I think actually playing sports in high school really helped me to appreciate my body and be happy with it. And it also helped me to think of food as fuel because if I I ate something that made me feel like crap before practice, I was gonna play like crap. And also if I wasn't eating enough, I wasn't gonna be able to perform well in my sport. But I think it really does depend on the sport because like you said, there are certain, you know, body stereotypes for certain sports. So in running track, I would just really try to, you know, think about your body as your instrument. You're an athlete and you're doing something really cool and using your body as that instrument to run track and do cross country. And so I think just showing appreciation and love to your body, even if it isn't the typical runner's body is really important for any sport that you're doing. Will you try the Luca and Gray curvy line? Yes, Skylar actually just texted me about this. A YouTuber, Aspen Ovard, has a clothing line called Luca and Gray, and I reviewed it before, but apparently they're launching plus sizes soon, which I'm really excited about. So I am super, super down to review that. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that, and uh, I'll keep an eye on their website for when it launches. Who are you rooting for in Winners at War? Okay. So I am a huge Survivor nerd. I listen to hours and hours of Survivor podcasts and coverage. My winner pick preseason was Tyson. He is like one of my favorite players. I think he's so funny. But then he got voted out and I was so sad, but then he made it back in the game and I was like, all right, we're back on track. I've got my winner pick. But if not Tyson, I would say, I think Sophie's playing a really good game and Sarah was playing pretty well up until this last episode. And then I was like, girl, why'd you give your reward to Nick? That was not the best decision. How do you respond to comments like you're so brave when people make comments about you wearing a particular outfit. I never know how to handle them because I know they're well-meaning, but they get under my skin. Like my default should be to be ashamed of the way I look. I absolutely feel this and I still don't know the right way to respond. I'll get comments from time to time like, wow, you're so brave to wear a swimsuit. I could never do that. And I know that that's not something that would be said to someone who, you know, was a size two or a size four wearing the same thing that I was. And so it does make me feel a little awkward and uncomfortable. Like, should I not be wearing this? Should I not be showing my body? But I know that they mean well, and I know it's not coming from a malicious place. They're not trying to body shame. So I think just understanding that everyone's at different places on their confidence journey and being grateful that you're at a place where you do not have to value yourself or choose what you can and can't wear because of your size. Megan Nicole Parker said, would you ever act again? And what is your dream role? So I, as I said, 
theater kid, born and raised. Well, actually, opposite of born and raised. No one in my family is theater people, and my parents put me in theater because I was so freaking crazy and hyperactive as a kid. I needed an outlet. So I started doing theater when I was six. I did it all the way through high school. I went to college to be a theater major. Then I found YouTube. And I haven't been in a show in, I think, four years-ish, but I would absolutely love to return to acting. And the cool thing about theater is it's not something you have to do at a certain age. I kind of think my typecast is actually meant to be the crazy old lady, but I'm just too young to play that right now. So in the future, down the line, maybe my time will come and I can just shine like the bright crazy old lady star that I am. <laughs> But actually, um, I would say dream roles right now would be Paulette in Legally Blonde and Madame Tenardier in Les Mis. I am a thousand percent a character actress. I love playing comedic roles. I love playing big roles. I love playing villains. So I feel like those are the roles that I have always tended to gravitate towards. And I think when I was a teen, I wanted to play the pretty feminine role in the ingenue. And once I realized that my strength comes from me being different and being able to belt and play those comedic characters, roles, that's when I like really started to reach my stride and what kind of roles I wanted to play and that I could play and that I could do really well. So I would love to go back to theater someday and uh, even if it's not soon, it'll happen eventually in my life and I'm certain of that. Are you trying to lose weight? Just noticing that you've been exercising and eating healthier. So I actually saw this one pop up a few times, so I figure it's a good time to address it. I am not actively trying to lose weight, but I am actively trying to live a healthier lifestyle. After my miscarriage, I kind of put everything on pause and I talked about this in last week's video that was all about relearning to love my body but after that I went months without going to the gym without really thinking about what I was eating feeling my body I just kind of let that all go out the door and so I've been actively trying for the past I would say month maybe month and a half to get back into an exercise routine and um, get back into healthy eating and feeling my body with foods that I like and that make me feel good so if my body happens to change at all because because I'm living healthier, that's totally fine with me. I have no problem with that, but I'm not actively trying to do that. I'm not stepping on the scale every week. I'm just trying to focus on health and not weight or size. So that is all the questions I'm gonna have time for today. This video was very long. I've been recording for a while. So if you're still watching this, thanks for hanging out with me. If you guys want more of these like casual Q and A or even just like chat videos, let me know down in the comments. Cause especially now being stuck at home, super down to make them. And uh, let me know in the comments if you agreed or disagreed with any of the things that I said in this video. I totally welcome respectful criticism. I do think there is a very fine line between hate and body shaming and respectful disagreeing. And I welcome respectful disagreeing. So please feel free. Let's start a conversation in the comments. Or if you wanna join my Confident and Kind Facebook group, I would love to have you there. But thank you so much for watching. Be confident, be kind to your body, and I will see you on Friday? No, today is Friday, Tuesday. I will see you on Tuesday with another new video. Bye.